Hello, my name is Mark Dinverno. Um, I am a, um, an academic at Goldsmiths University of London and I'm currently on sabbatical working at the Artificial Intelligence Research Institute in Barcelona. Uh, I have a background um, both as an AI researcher um, and, and have done a lot of work with um, staff and colleagues at um, AAAI. Uh, and I'm also a musician, so I'm also someone that's played music for 40 years. Um, professionally uh, as a jazz musician mostly so you know I come at this from two lenses so I'm really pleased to be part of this session and I'm going to answer three of the questions that have been posed thank you so about creativity um, the answer is I don't think it is possible to define creativity in a few words I'll say what I think it means but the word has changed. The word has changed um, in the last 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, 1,000 years. Um, one of the most uh, tricky problems with the word is its use really since the war, since about the 1950s, where it was kind of taken from advertising. Um, it was a book called Use Your Creative Power, uh, and it was kind of taken over by modern psychology as well. Uh, and it was the idea that creativity was a power in the mind, a power in the mind to produce novelty uh, and a power in the mind to produce originality. Now, the problem is, is that when you start to define creativity as a power in the mind, you then can start to think about AI as having a power to create novelty and um, originality. And in some sense, novelty and originality are easy. I can get go to a piano and just play some random set of notes. That's original and it's novel. And it misses out, I think, um, on a fundamental aspect of what it is to be creative. And what it is to be creative, um, before this kind of you know view about um, modern psychology, it being a power in the mind, is much more about a lived, embodied experience. Um, so this idea that actually it is the process of making art, the process of making music, the process of living, which is absolutely key. And it is that moment to moment um, relationship we have with the, our world, our social, physical, biological world outside. It's, it is that aspect um, of being human uh, that I think about when being creative. So if I think about artistic creativity, I think about that in, in the same way that any process, really. I think about that in the same way that I might give a talk or that I might play the piano or that I might make work. Um, it is a moment to moment engagement with that thing that I'm doing right now. So we're playing the piano, I'm playing the keys, I'm acutely aware of what's going on. I'm trying to um, uh, be curious about what's happening as I'm improvising. But that's no different for teaching to being with friends to talking. So in some sense, I think of um, artistic creativity and human creativity in the same way. But it is about being a human being embodied in the world with a real strong sense of our, our culture and our background and our traditions and bringing all of ourselves to the moment in order to, to make work, to make art. Okay, this is a really important question. Uh, so the answer, basic answer is yes. Um, uh, I think it can. And I think this is really important distinction. And I've written about the idea of heroic agency, where the, we think about the machine as the lone creative, and collaborative agency, where we think about the AI as a creative partner to, to produce new performances, produce new processes for making work, for making art. Um, and, you know, it goes back again to what I was talking about, about how you think about creativity. If you think that creativity is a kind of disembodied power of the mind to produce novelty, then of course it makes sense to think about machines having creativity and producing novel poems or bits of music. But I, I think this is nonsense, really. Um, the creative process is something which is uniquely human and it's a lived, embodied experience. Now. That doesn't mean to say that I can't anthropomorphize uh, an AI system for a brief period of time in order for it to get the best um, out of me. So if we think about AI systems as provoking, of challenging, uh, of supporting human creativity, 
then if I'm pl may improvising with an AI system, in that interaction, whilst I'm performing, it makes sense for me to think about that as a musical agent and, and almost to think about it as human, you know, to just, just to allow myself the opportunity to be as good as I can be. Now, I'm not to say that the machine is being creative in itself, but that I ascribe some aspect of creative agency to that machine in order that I can be become a better musician or create a better musical performance. And so that idea that AI systems with agency change our creative processes and, and make us think in different ways, I think is really important. And I think this is a really fantastic way that we can think about AI as challenging and provoking our creative processes to bring us out of any orthodoxies or patterns of behavior. I think this is a really important question. Uh, so the reason that I think it's uh, that, you know, thinking about creative eye in, in creative contexts, and particularly in music, is because um, we are familiar with music. We are familiar with the interaction between an, um, musicians on stage. And so to think about the interactions between an AI and uh, human musicians, it's, it's a familiar setting, it's not safety critical, and it helps us answer some bigger questions. Like, what, why would we want an AI musician anyway? We don't, I mean, I cannot imagine ever why would we would want to listen to a single AI machine. And so I think it's really important that when we design AI systems, we're thinking about the lived experiences of the audience. What do they get from this? And also from the human that, uh, imp you know, the musician that is improvising with the AI. And it raises really important questions because it says, do we want to give over our creativity to AI? Do, in a musical scenario, do we want the AI to explain its decisions? Do we want it to tell us why it chose particular notes or sequences or to behave in certain musical ways uh, to the audience and to the musician so that we have more meaningful interactions? And this then starts to answer a bigger question around ethics, is that um, we as a society want to have more say in how AI is deployed in our society. And I think we need to do more to support public, the public, all of us, in understanding what is going on in AI systems. So using a creative context and talking about what AI is giving and talking about what we don't want to give to the AI in terms of our own creative decisions is really important. So I think it's critical that we bring ethics into the consideration and public engagement um, of, of AI systems and how we want them when we're talking about AI and creativity.